Uh, welcome to One America. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. It's good to be with you today. So, AG, uh, first of all, let me say thank you. I appreciate it. We all here at OAN appreciate this letter. And I think the millions upon millions of Americans who want to hear other voices, other opinions when it comes to politics appreciate you penning this letter. Why'd you do it? Well, a couple things. First, this is America. America prizes a diversity of different perspectives. And everyone, whether you're conservative or a moderate or liberal, you shouldn't have to feel that your government is trying to muzzle your voice. You have to have the ability to not only speak freely, but when you see efforts that are designed to kind of shut out conservative content, that's very troublesome. And when it comes from people in such positions of authority within the Congress, that got our attention. And so as we looked at the letter that Congress had sent the other day to these 12 cable and satellite companies, we knew that it demanded a response, not only because of the obvious problems of trying to silence conservative speech, but because we thought it also raised some potential antitrust issues, that if you're going to be urging all of these companies to drop all these conservative voices and news programs, that there could be some real implications down the line, because the only way to really effectuate that kind of goal would be through collusive type of behavior. And we think that could be a real problem. We wanted to bring that to Congress's attention and make sure that everyone knows this is not going to be as simple as, yeah, we're going to threaten companies to do what we want. Now people know there's some other issues out there they need to think about, and everyone needs to comply with state and federal antitrust laws. Well, to me, the letter that Miss issue from Northern California and Congressman McNerney, also from Northern California, uh, sent to those 12 companies, to me, is so hypocritical because they're only pointing out and saying that OAN, Fox News, Max, have provided mis- or disinformation when it comes to election integrity and COVID. Okay, let's take a step back. They don't mention anything about the four or five years that CNN, MSNBC, or the big three sure. networks covered the Russian collusion hoax. They portrayed that as factual. Now we know, thanks to the Horowitz Report and everything else, that it was all lies. Yet they still talk about Russian collusion with President Trump. So if you're going to pen a letter saying misinformation, disinformation, shouldn't you include about every news organization out there? Well, right. Look, the letter is hypocritical, right? Exactly. I mean, we all know that because there were so many actions over the years uh, that were one-sided. And whether you're talking about MSNBC or CNN or other publications, the fact is that there's going to be some inherent bias that you're seeing in a lot of different media outlets. What I'm saying today, though, is really critical that you want to make sure that none of the voices are going to be wiped out, right? I think it's important for the American people to respect diversity of content. Liberals can have their voice, moderates can have their voice, and most assuredly, conservatives have their voice as well. And when I start to see concerted activity try to drown out those voices, and this follows on the heels of what we saw November, December, January through big tech, when there was an effort to uh, silence voices or speaking out on social media, it gets me very concerned. We all prize the First Amendment, and we know that to succeed long-term in this country, we have to let many voices flourish throughout the media outlets across our country. And that's why I stepped up. I think it's critical that we uh, make sure people know what's going on and how dangerous these ideas are. I totally agree with you. And let me just point out, because you brought up that censoring that's happened since right before the election all the way through. I mean, it's yeah. happened years before that, but it really stepped up right before the election when it comes to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. Um, I'd like to point out the fact, and you probably know this, but I don't know if our viewers do, Congresswoman Ishu, Eshu, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I don't want somebody calling me out for messing up the pronunciation. Um, her district is in Silicon Valley, where all the big old oligarchs from big tech and big tech social media have their corporations. So I wonder if there was some pressure on the Congresswoman and this Congresswoman both of them to pen this letter by those big tech oligarchs. Again, we may never know that, but just wanted to point that out. Uh, so an attorney general is considered the top cop in their state, right? So you're doing this, you took a stand. I did some math quick. There's 27 Republican governors right. in this country. 
So since a lot of AGs are appointed, that means hopefully there are 27 conservative AGs. Are you reaching out and are you getting support from the other 26 AGs out there? Maybe even some Democrats. I hope so. This should actually be all 50 AGs that are going to sign on to this letter with you and get it out to all 12 of these companies that the two Democrats went after. I, I am reaching out and I think that the message is pretty clear. Look, if you're a news outlet, uh, you owe it to your viewers, viewers to put out fair and accurate information and to fact check. Um, I think that we all support that, and no one wants to propagate false information. But what we're standing for is to make sure that people aren't going to try to just wipe out um, the shows that millions of people have come to rely on. You need to preserve all voices on cable and satellite and social media. That's the, the best way to handle it long term. We are having conversations with other AGs. I think you're going to see other uh, state attorneys general step up. This should be a bipartisan issue. No one should be supporting muzzling speech and trying to use potentially collusive efforts to get people to drop conservative programs. It's just not right. Um, I'm not going to stand by and just watch that happen. And this is why state attorneys general are so critical and why we have to get out in front and defend America. Because with one party rule in Washington right now, it's going to be up to the states to make sure that their voices are heard and that concerns related to antitrust or overregulation or instances where the federal government steps over the Constitution, we're going to be there to step up and say, no, you can't go further. And obviously, we're watching this very, very close. Yeah, that goes along the same lines with election integrity. I mean, we do have one ruling party right now in the White House, a split in the Senate, but the deciding factor is the vice president. So pretty much it's controlled by Democrats. And like you said, whether it comes to this issue or many others, it is going to lie on you, state officials, AGs, House right. Senate, House representatives, to take action. I think this goes deeper, too, than you said antitrust laws. It just goes to the core of freedom of speech. I mean, right. here at OAN, we have news. We have talk shows like mine. There's opinions put in those programs along with facts. And again, I can cite one just simple example that just happened yesterday when CNN and other networks were covering the accident of Tiger Woods. They had pundits on bringing up his supposed alleged addiction to painkillers and saying maybe that's what caused the crash. Before anything has come out, any ruling by police, they're throwing that out there. Yet OAN is now in this letter that was sent out accused of spreading disinformation about COVID when we had doctors on our network, proof in the pudding, had 1,200, 2,000 patients using different types of either drugs or vitamins or hydroxychloroquine that actually worked to combat COVID. And that's one of the things in the letter they went after is they're saying that was disinformation towards COVID. Well, it's not disinformation if several doctors are using it and it worked on their patients. So it really goes to the core of having free speech and for Americans, I think, too, uh, AG, it goes to freedom of choice. You should be able to click and go, okay, well, I'll, right. I'll watch CNN for a few minutes, then I'll watch OAN, then I'll watch Fox. So uh, let, let's step back for a moment. I think anyone watching right now would know that we all have an incentive to avoid misinformation or to propagate falsehoods. I think we can reach common ground on this, but that's not what that letter was about. It wasn't about misinformation. It was literally about sending a message that we want you to silence conservative news programs across the country. That's where it's unacceptable. I think most Americans, regardless of politics, would say, let's have a level playing field. We know that there's going to be conservative thought. There'll be votes in the, in the middle part of the political spectrum. There'll be liberals out there. Let's have a fight, a debate over ideas. Let's not try to use the power of big tech and media to silence voices just so not only we can keep all the political power we just accumulated, but we can impose uh, we can impose penalties on our enemies. That's not the way our system is supposed to work here in the United States of America. No, I never thought I would see a day and age where you've got Democrats literally trying to shut down free speech because they don't like what we're saying over here. Yet the other networks, and we know that every print, magazine, cable, mainstream networks, all of them, the research is there, it's like 89, 90% lean right. skew or controlled by the left. There is such a small voice of conservative voices out there like an OAN that That's to take right. away this, it is a point blank 
attack. And I like in your letter, you pointed out, it reminded you of the Hollywood blacklisting back in the day that happened. Absolutely. Look, and the reality is you could go back maybe 20, 30 years from now. Remember the ACLU? They used to actually speak out on issues like this when the First Amendment was being implicated. We need people, good patriots across the political spectrum to say, let's not go down this pathway where we're going to be making threats to pull different types of programming off the air. Let America engage in a good civil debate. Let these programs go on across the spectrum. And don't try to use these ham-handed tactics in order to gain even more political power. Couldn't agree with you more. Final question for you, Attorney General Morrissey. You sent this one to the CEO, Mr. Stanky, over at uh, AT&T, but that letter by the two Dems was sent to 12 different companies. Are you forwarding the same letter then to all of those companies? We are. Every single company that received a letter from the members of Congress is getting one from our office. So they have those now. And then obviously we're going to be watching this very carefully to evaluate what role our office and our other colleagues will have in the future. So I'm hopeful that Congress pays attention as to the antitrust implications and that they realize, hey, maybe we went a little bit too far uh, with that letter to those companies. Attorney General for the great state of West Virginia, Patrick Morrissey, I appreciate your uh, intestinal fortitude, your grit and your guts to go after these two Dems with their outlandish claims and their threats in their letter to these 12 companies. Uh, I think I speak for all of us here at OAN and Herring Broadcasting. Thank you so much for doing so. And I hope that we can see more than 27 attorney generals sign on to this letter with you because as you said throughout this interview, this is not a left-right thing. This is coming no. after freedom of speech, freedom of choice, and every American should be concerned. Every attorney general that is uh, put forth to uphold the law should say, this is against the law, and I sign off. We should see 45, 50 AG sign on to this. We thank you so much for your time. Amen. Thanks so much for having me on today. Yep. God bless you, sir. All right, so there you go. The letter's out. Uh, we will see if those Democrats who held the hearing today and have attacked OAN and other conservative networks will heed this warning. Hopefully, the big key here is, will the CEOs of companies like Cox, Spectrum, DirecTV, Dish, AT&T heed this warning, know that it goes against the Constitution, against antitrust laws, and pretty much say the letter's not worth the paper it's written on and pull a Nancy Pelosi and tear it up kind of like she did to President Trump's speech. But we will have to wait and see. Jen, we'll throw it back to you. This fight is far from over.